the world. Y'all don't know the hymn? To me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength. How long? From day to day, without him I would fall. You know there's no way we can live without him. When I am sad to him, I go. No other one can cheer me so when I am sad. He makes me glad. He's my friend we have in Jesus. You might know that one. All our sins and griefs to bear. Come on, say it, say it. What a privilege to carry. Oh, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Everything to God in prayer. You can take it to the Lord in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. I know. Brother Dr. Todd Hall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time, clap your hands and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes Lord. Can I hear you as a church? One more round. I will obey. Come on, clap your hands and tell us. I will obey. Yes, Come on, every voice. I will. I will. your hands and tell them thank you. 
I said, clap your hands and tell them thank you. You may be seated. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I was glad when they said unto me, can I get some talkers out there? Let us, give me a little highs, just a little. Let us go into the house of the Lord. For truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. There's power in this room tonight. And we need to embrace it. I want to pause and thank God and don't clap yet because we're so robotic. Let's really know why we're thanking God. Your pastor, your bishop, let me have a little highs on this mic, sound man. Spent some time, thank you, with me on yesterday. Took me out to a nice place to have his only meal. Yes, sir. It was chicken. I will not divulge what I ate, but I ate it with his permission. But sometimes, and tonight's gonna be a crucial night, I promise you. Sometimes we get so used to having a good thing, we don't know how good it really is. I don't hear y'all on this side of the church. I've known him since he was minister, elder, pastor, now bishop. And you cannot look at him the same way when God promotes him. Can I get some talk? I'm gonna make the organ stop. When God honors a man enough to let another man pass the baton and the torch, he is basically saying what David did not build your son Solomon shall. And some of us knew him as Anthon. And even though we hang out, he can call me Todd, but I barely call him Anthon. And we're friend friends. I just be like, Bishop. And he'd be like, come on, man, a bishop. Because black people get too familiar. I don't hear y'all talking over here. And then, all right, hold the music. And then some of us build our names off of other people's names. But never respect the name that we're building our name off of. This man's name is nationally and internationally known. And he is your leader on tonight i want you to stand and give god a great applause and praise for his grace the honorable bishop i don't hear nobody anthon white come on frank anthon white you're gonna stand two more times and we'll lose a quarter of a pound be seated all of y'all said you're going to start the gym the beginning of the year. We had so many different conversations that I won't discuss, but they were healthy. And iron sharpens iron. Can I get a witness? You got to start talking to people who can help you get some answers. And stop talking to folk that understand you and get you to start learning how to understand what's going on around you. The Lord saw fit because we were not entitled to tell God how long to let Bishop Frank Otherwhite stay here. But he didn't see fit to call home his wife. She is also progenitor along with her husband and when you see her, you see the father because they are one. She will probably never ever feel made whole but her son is doing a great job keeping her busy. And we should stand and salute elect lady, the honorable Dr. Juliet White. Y'all clap better, that's my mom. 
I let her know she's right all the time. He makes her question herself. So he's got me by a few months, so I let him go ahead and he'd be like, Ma, that ain't right. I'd be like, she right. And she said, I love my son. He knows I'm right. So I'll take that. And last but not least, Holy Ghost is in the room. Somebody shout yes again. Shout it louder than that. Yes. Holy music one more time. I've been taking an Uber everywhere. Not that I can't use his car or him come get me, but I know he's busy and I've never been in a cab in years. So I've been, I downloaded the Uber app. The Uber app would tell me how many minutes they're going to get to pick me up and also tell me, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's going to tell me the make of the car and the name of the person. So I got in the car and I asked the Lord, why are you making me basically catch an Uber? He said, it's not that you can spare the money. He says, tonight, this was last night, I want you to do something that people have stopped doing. And I wish I had two people talking to me. I asked God, what is that? He says, I want you to witness who I am to the driver. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, y'all going to think I'm playing. The only side that talked to me is the only side I'm going to prophesy to. So we're going to play it real even through here. How can he choose that? Because it's my gift. I'm going to preach to everybody. But if my father give me a bike, I don't have to let you ride. And I don't prophesy to folk who don't praise him. Because I feel like you're using my father. Are y'all with me? The guy in the car, it was a young man. His name was Russell. He was driving a silver Toyota. Got into his vehicle and the first thing I asked him was, how long has he been working for Uber? He said, two months. Then he asked me, because, you know, I'm trying to ease myself into, do I still know how to witness? Because sometimes your gift can put out your purpose. Oh, y'all into us. I was like, thank you. Thank you over here. Very rare where the musician section is louder than the church. And I um, asked him what was his ethnicity. And he told me, I eased over to what did he think about President Trump? Because he was of a certain culture. And he told me, then I wisely said, I agree with whatever he said. Y'all don't hear me? About 46 minus one. He said, you do? I said, I do. Then the Lord told me, get to it because look on your app you're a mile away I said uh can you pull over a minute to this gas station I got to use the lavatory I did wasn't urgent but I used it because I had to get more time oh see I'm going to turn the whole pulpit over here because that seemed like that's where all the prophesying going tonight. And some of y'all laughing, but one of you got to renew your license. But I'll be over there in a second. Now, let me tell you. Oh, no, it's good news because you're not going to pay for it. Just hang in there. I, um, I know when God is speaking to me. I don't play with mine. I am true to this. And, um got back in his vehicle and I said, how has your year been? He says, it's not been too good. I said, we only like four days in. He says, it's not been good. 
He said, I'm not sad, but I'm not excited. So I said, well, you're mel melancholy. He said, okay, we'll use that word, sir. I said, you know, you're driving a man who thinks life is great. He said, that's good. I said, no, great young man. He was younger. I said, I've survived the stroke. I survived this. I survived that. And he paused and started crying a little bit. He said, huh? He said, my father just had a stroke. He can't talk. I said, yeah, let me talk to you about strokes. Oh, I don't hear nobody. And he said, sir, I'm not going to even charge you for this ride. Do you have 10 minutes to talk to me? I said, I'll pay double just to hold a conversation with you. See, some of you want a miracle, but you don't want to pay. Like right now, you're paying attention, but you're not holding a conversation. So you always put yourself in the seat to receive. I told him about all of my travesties. Everything, all of my failures. He looked at me, he says, I'm a Muslim. I said, uh oh. I said, I'm a Christian. He says, what do you think about Muslims? I said, what do you think about a Christian? He says, to be honest, I have never served in the capacity in my religion. I just need to believe in something. I said, well, let me introduce you. Now, at this time, I wanted to dance, but I'm not there. And I pulled out my phone and went to my Bible app and asked him, could I sit up front? And I couldn't believe it worked. We went to the simple scripture, for God so loved the world. You see how some of you stood up but didn't talk? That's why you can't win no souls. That's why you can't keep a marriage, because you can't talk. Black people have become great at looking portraying but lack of communication when I finished big brother elder Edgar he was crying and no 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 this is real because I have to do it again tomorrow the Lord said one person a day and I know one of them gonna be difficult I'm glad it won Russell And when I got out, he said, can I get out and hug you? I said, oh, Lord, I want to dance again. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, no, I'll let you know. I said, uh, sure. And in this day, you're nervous, you know, with all of the threats and terrorism. And he admitted he's a Muslim, and I'm watching crazy TV all day. So I'm in my Brooklyn stance. Hugged him. He hugged me tight, very strong, big young man. Started crying. He said, it's a pleasure meeting you. I said, hold on to my God and read the Bible. He said, sir, I'm going to go get a Bible early in the morning. Hold on. Hold on. I'm glad y'all talking. Woke up this morning because you were busy. Called an Uber to go to L.A. Fitness to go to the steam room to try to get what's in here out. The driver, Russell. See, some of you just don't believe it's Russell. I come outside, I said, what? The man just worked all night. He said, I went to buy a Bible this morning. And you told me last night you were going to go to the gym, so I started working early. Hanging around the hotel, because when you push it, it gives you the closest car to your destination. <laughs> DeBar, y'all pray for your bishop. Got in his car. He drove me not to the 
L.A. Fitness that I'm used to going to, he took me to Jericho Turnpike. Pulled up to the front. The Holy Ghost said, now you want me to use you? I said, yes, sir, Lord. He said, you don't have a voice, but you got my power. I said, what you want me to tell him? Tell him, go straight to the ho hospital to see his father. I said, what? Tell him his father's moving. So I ain't scared. I may never see him no more. So I looked at Russell. I said, Russell, when you go visit your dad to today, he said, I'm going right after here. I said, he's going to be moving. He said, let me tell you something, mister. If my father's moving, I will serve your God for the rest of my life. Hold on. When we spoke, it was 2.30. When I went to the gym, it was 11. When the Lord said that, I got bold enough to tell him, take me with you. See, y'all don't want to witness. We went to the hospital a few counties over, walked in. The nurse said, your dad's in the bathroom. He said, who took him in there? Said, he walking a little bit. Father came out, the boy starts trembling, hugging me, right? Don't worry, I'm getting him in church on tomorrow. Because some of you are crying over things that make no sense. When death and life, y'all don't hear me, is in the power of your tongue. You are going through because you don't know how to call those things. I will admit so that we don't look hypocritical. I was very nervous. As a person that's been saved now almost 40 years, very nervous, hoping that God would not leave me hanging. Because I have not seen saints witness in a long time. Y'all go and recycle those who were saved already. Yeah. But I'm talking about dealing with sinners and people that don't know Jesus. I think some of you forgot how to talk to them. Because you don't know how to talk to each other. So at the count of three, you may have missed what I said on Sunday, but I'm going to rehash it. And I'm going to see if ten folk will scream. Tonight, God says, I'm going to bless those who use their mouth because I'm going to save their sons. On Sunday, the Lord said, I would save the sons. This does not mean he won't save the daughters. And those that are incarcerated will get a second opportunity to walk in freedom. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're my shantala makasaya. See, you that have your mouths open, that's you drawing nigh to him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated. Young man dressed in the suit, stand. Talk loud to me if you can. What's your full name? Last name? Duvos? Dubos. How old are you? Can I have Bishop until I know that I'm fully recovered of whatever it is because I don't feel sick. I just ain't got no voice. Can I have Bishop lay hands on you in a minute but you will go to him? Thank you for your permission at 17. 
God said, for every step you take, and only you can know how many steps you will take, God's going to give you $1,000 towards college. Now, I'm going to help you cheat. Because if you take giant steps, you're going to get less money. If you take the short route, Some grown-ups in here like, I wish he talked to me. I, I, when we were kids, we used, to pre, we used to play a game. It was called Mama May I. And, and for you that love to cheat, it was red light, green light. I'm going to ask you to not take the long route because you're not going to need $300,000. You're going to walk from there, but I'm going to teach you to put one foot, look at me, in front of the other. Don't start walking because now you can't go back. And that was only like 3,000. You see them big three steps you took? Don't take those. One step in front of the other. As you are doing it, you will praise God all of your way, all the way to the bishop. God said when you get there, heaven will pull out its checkbook. I'm giving you metaphors. Sign your future education. I may have told you this on Sunday, I'm not sure. But whatever school you wind up going to, you're going to become like a campus pastor. God said, this is the way I'm going to give you ministry without you avoiding education. Because you know you're called to preach. But the anointing minus education sometimes turns out foolish. As he is taking one step in front of the other, you will clap as if it's your son. Start doing it and praise him on your way there. He better be counting. Because I've counted 10,000 already, 11, 12. 17, 20. The steps of a good man are ordered. Y'all look crazy if you want to. Stand behind him, Elder Stewart. The Holy Ghost is in the building. Bishop gave him an extra 5,000. He backed up off it. Be seated. I'm about to read and teach. And he got the right name, Joshua. Don't he have the right name? more things I want to say and I need 10 of you who need a miracle to talk to me whether nobody else does and be consistent some of you will never get miracles because you need God to make them make sense and when a thing like this is done that makes no sense to you like why can't God just give them the money it tells me that you don't read the Bible and two folk in the third row mad now. You can be mad. You don't read the Bible. You read it to quote it, but not to understand. Because if we go through the discussion of why three folk will scream on this, then why did they have to march around the walls of Jericho? Why couldn't God just knock them down? To all of you that need God to make sense is why you've never experienced him. I'm 
not serving him to understand him. Last of my shikiti kora mahai. Somebody with a loud mouth shout, yes. yes. I moved about 30 minutes ahead in time. That's never happened to me. Something new happens to me every few years. I'm going to wait on a young light-skinned man to walk in this door of the church who's really not supposed to come because he's depressed and almost suicidal because his parents, um, his mother married somebody, they're moving, and he has to move out, and he has nowhere to live. Now y'all remember what I said, okay? This simply means that who she married told her her son can't move with them. I'll leave the rest of it alone because y'all don't care. But if anybody's thinking about committing suicide, we all should care. I don't hear, I said we are. There are two people in here right now, I won't call you out, that thought about it for about three months last year. Three straight months. You're sitting in here right now. Lord, guide his footsteps. Come on, let's send that up. Lord, guide his footsteps. Just like you did Joshua, guide his footsteps. Because he's out there contemplating doing something wrong now to make money to get a place to live. Lord, guide his footsteps. The last thing I want to say as a rule to get a miracle tonight, because the sermon is not that long, is where I left off with marching around the walls of Jericho and I'll give you the condensed version and three of you will talk to me, I ask for 10. My brother Bishop Anton White knows, and this is with all due respect, the Bible in more ways than I do. So I watch him to see if I'm right. You see how y'all get jealous? You don't even know what you have. Sometimes I come and be like, yo, man, I'm about to say something. What would you say? He said, well, you know, historically back in... <laughs> and keeps his hand like this on back in the... Then he tried to make me feel like I know everything. Come on, man, you already know him. We pop fists and walk off. But I take that answer, too. I was reading... There's a person that God is keeping from harm, making sure that her footing stays with God this year like never before. Because if it does, she's going to be supernaturally blessed and protected and loved properly. I don't see her, but she has on like a black sweatsuit hoodie. You, with the band on your head, stand up. This is your invitation. God says, with all the mess you've seen in church and in people and around your house, God said, there's no excuse anymore. God said, if she gives me her whole life today, I will show her the best four years of her life to come. And you won't have to think about, I'm moving, I'm just moving. I'm moving, I'm leaving, I'm moving to another state. God says, tell her, her inheritance is in her face right now. Now, I'm going to do you a favor. And I don't want you to think I'm a false prophet. God said you can't even blame a father for this. At all. Said tell her she can't take her childhood problems into her adulthood. You will cross over, but they will not cross with you. God's even changing your company. 
to make sure that you understand you were chosen since two years old. I'm going to have you walk to the bishop. You ain't got to take no baby steps. Because yours ain't about money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to say something else to you. In Moss Code, only you will understand this. God says, tell you, he has to bless you even in this church because he's got to show one person what they messed out on, missed out on. You cannot spread your business out of pain. If you want to kill an enemy, succeed. I don't hear y'all talking over there. Y'all still clapping and not talking? Can't get married without repeating after me. Can't get in court until you swear on the Bible. You got to talk everywhere. Can't even kiss the bride till you say words. Can't get a divorce and get your money without mediation. Can't get saved until you confess with your mouth. So how do you stay saved being quiet after? You're going to walk to him. The Lord said when he anoints your head and your shoulders like he's dusting you off, every spirit of oppression, because you're not possessed, it's oppression. You have a few good days and some, something stupid happened. God said, I'm going to trim her temper. I'm going to trim her attitude. I'm going to show her exactly who I am and tell her she will get over the past five years of unreasonable things. Walk to the bishop, be blessed, and y'all clap and open your mouth so that this young lady could be blessed. That's not loud enough with all of you people. And whatever's leaving her, it will never return again. Can I get some screamers up in Zion Cathedral? Bishop, stay there. I don't touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Tell her, look at me. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. But some of the way she is, is a repeat of who you are. The Lord says, and if you respect me, you'll see a blessing in 30 days. God said, I need to command you to hug in front of everybody and you will tell her sorry. You will tell your daughter sorry. When you do, the shackles over the family will break on everybody. And somebody with a loud mouth start clapping right now. Tell that girl sorry. <laughs> Are y'all being too passive? You may be seated. Got to say my one more thing and read. All of it is linking. I have no general prophecies to give. So please don't think I'm going to tell you about your car tonight. If you get a job and save money, you can get a car. If you clean up your credit, you won't need a cosigner. Makona Mahashi and I. 
Let them have their moment. Let them have that moment. Just look at somebody, be nice and be sensible, be sensible and tell them God's on his way to your house. Mm -hmm. you, are, you will understand that later. There'll be peace where you sleep. Would you, will, will you tell someone that? There'll be peace where you sleep. Bishop, confirm this for me, and if I'm wrong, tell me downstairs. God told the children, march around the walls of Jericho one time a day for six days. Talk to me, talk to me. Because you ain't going to get ministered to like them because you ain't talking. You in a hoping, Lord, Lord, that's not how it works. If that be the case, keep thinking about money and don't go get a job. See if it just come. Faith without. All right, stay with me. Stay with me. One time every day for six days on the seventh day, seven times. But the order he gave, then I'm going to challenge 20 people who need a miracle this week to, to, to obey the orders. He said, tell them the, for the first six days, say nothing. Don't say a word. He said, but on the seventh day, on the seventh time, tell the people shout. Because I have given them the city. I have not started the sermon. The sermon is easier than this. And I asked God, what is it that you want me to tell Zion and those who are visiting and for the 20 folk who are catching it, who need a miracle, you have to engage in conversation. He said, tell them the reason why nothing shook or fell is silence does nothing. And what they couldn't get in six days, they got in one. Y'all ain't... Oh, y'all... Oh. As soon as they shouted, everything started trembling because he wanted to teach them, you have an obligation to these walls. They are up and will stay up as long as you're quiet. Black people, we've become too swaggerific and y'all are so good at the quickening, but some of this ain't real no more. It's learned behavior. But to talk is your power. You have not. I can't hear anybody. Then some of you probably have not because you never spoke not. Improper grammar, but you never spoke. I asked the doctor, even when my son was born, we were battling to see whether he would say mama or dada first. And she walk around, mama. And I walk around, dada. That boy fooled us both. And on this note, if you need God to open doors and shake things, you're going to have 20 seconds to jump and scream loud for yourself or you will be living in silence with walls up. That boy said the word first that wasn't mama nor dada. He said what he wanted the most. He said, Baba. I said, what? You missed it. She reached for him, mama. I reached for him, dada. He said, baba. The Lord is here. And what you need is here. But you've not said anything. 
at the count of three. Not, not those who are just doing it for a moment. This is going to be your yearly exercise. Yes, 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 Lord. I'm going to get more this year than I've ever had in my life. Now, I've never prophesied to myself ever, but I'm doing it right now. I don't believe that the Egyptians we see, we have to see them anymore. Oh, I don't hear that. I just don't believe that you have to repeat anything that you've gone through because we're not in another year, we're in another decade. Things don't change every year, but they have to shift every decade. And if you're living the same way now, something's wrong with you. If you quiet tonight as you were last year, something's wrong. You got to ask for what you want. Count of three, 20 of you. I'm going to already give you 17 because me, mom, and Bishop White, we taking the first three spots. Look at what, what gives y'all that right? Uh, we took it. So there are 17 positions for you to fight over with your mouth. You ain't got to push. You ain't got to frown. You got 20 seconds to give God the praise that will make Jericho. Yep, some of you ain't going to get it. You ain't going to never get it. This shouldn't feel strange to you. All right, let me get through this teaching and my senior brother's going to help me do the hollering. John chapter 2. Verses 1 through 11. Don't, don't reset, y'all. I'm on my way. If I can get you to run, touch him. If I can get you to run in belief, not just because you're obedient. God says, I'm making someone that you don't know about to offer you and your wife their house. They're going to give it to you cheaper than rent, and they're going to want you to pay the note. That's all you got to do. Are uh, y'all just, there you go, clapping again, huh? You just can't remember. I'm not going to go too deep, but it'll be the second house from the corner. And some of y'all just look jealous like you just... I told y'all I was going to prophesy in the direction that they were talking to me. Is your license okay? It's not. Did they take it? Run one more time. God's having somebody get you your license back. Now y'all jealous again, but we just going to keep giving it until you catch it. 
Because all of that pretty stuff is why you in the mess you in right now. I won't ask you to reveal yourself, but someone in here that has a great position in DMV, talk to him after church. I won't point at you because then there'll be about eight other people coming to you. I ain't lying. Assist God in helping his word come to pass. John chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. This is a risky text for me tonight. I will be looking at two people as I tread softly. I will be keeping my eyes on Dr. Juliet White. I will explain the reason why I took this approach after church. And then I will go out with Bishop White and tell him why I had to take this approach. If we all preach the same way, the same thing, then things are going to keep turning out the same way. Can I get my 20 folk to talk now? Yeah, yeah, 20 of you. You come from that kind of church. You talk now. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Jesus said unto her woman in a respectable way, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Where's my 20 member church? Yeah, when you talk, old school preachers get a chance to catch their breath. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. I like this side now. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the pur purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. They filled them to the brim. He saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. When the rulers of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he, uh, they knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10 saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. Let me change this and paraphrase it for two folk who will push me. Some people don't like you because you don't do it like they do it. I want to preach, but y'all need to be glad I ain't got no voice. I promise you. And when you don't do it like others, they make you feel like you're doing it wrong. Here comes rules in verse 10. Every man, this is how we do it. We set forth good wine, and when people have gotten drunk, then that which is worse. But the exception to the rule, you have, I can't get help, kept the good wine until now. Verse 11 is going to solidify the approach to the tension that I'm about to put on the text. I'm I'm going to get in trouble. The beginning, this beginning of what? Miracles. Come on, 20 members, stay alert. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested what? Y'all said we're going from glory to glory now. Let me just go on and lay the foundation for trouble. Don't sit. I got five to six words left of this text. Then you can be seated but not quiet. Ten of you catch this and then help me cause tension. It is funny that people are going to believe on him and they are going to give him glory from his first miracle, which is making wine.
ain't healed nobody. I knew the tension done started. So let me read the text. The tension has already began. That he can use something you don't agree with to get glory. Look at some of y'all. He need to be careful making Jesus look carnal. Oh, what? You need to be careful trying to be Jesus. This beginning uh -uh, of miracles did Jesus in Cain of Galilee manifested his glory. And from whatever he did, his disciples... You may be seated, but don't be silent. Keep your Bibles open or whatever you use to read it. I've got like six topics. I got one for Mother's Day, which will be called a mother's request. I wish somebody in my 20 talk. Where, where you get that from in the text? Because they'd have never got wine if the mother didn't make the request. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of y'all better find a friend that can get your request known. See, bobbleheading don't pay no bills. Y'all gonna learn. Oh, you gonna learn today. My father was blessed not from being deep and in school. My father would dance every service and scream in every service I've ever seen in all my life. Get in, nobody moving. He just, ah, ah. I said, there he go, embarrassing me again. But it worked. I did not inherit his money. I inherited his God. Oh, yeah, and his behavior. So he could be quiet, but if I'm in your service and it's too quiet, I'd be like, hey. That's going to be me. The one with no bills. That's going to be me. That's going to be me. The one that survived the stroke that shouldn't walk, but the Lord gave him his mo That's going to be me. Because when I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say, That I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. That's for Mother's Day. That's the next time I will preach this. In a good setting is on Mother's Day. The second topic that I'm going to use a little bit for those of the 20 will talk is just do it. Will you just tag three people if they don't look like they need anger management? Tell them just do it. Because some of y'all would have been had a miracle if you stopped asking so many questions and just do what the Lord has asked you to do. Am I boring y'all? The fourth topic, I'm not going to give you all six because some of y'all still in sermons. The fourth topic. The third topic <laughs> is this, and I'm hoping somebody jumps out of the 20 who wants a miracle. God says, drinks are on the house. Now, what that term means is you don't have to pay for it. You follow? So the Lord said, all of you that came tonight and you came to worship him, what you can afford, he said, I'll do it for you. This is simply called a miracle. I feel glory in the house. The other one I'll save and tell Bishop what it is. Now I'm in trouble, so I'm just going to stick to my notes. As I read, if, if you feel any of it, push me. That will encourage me. 
Miracles are so scarce in the 21st century because people have been taught that only God works miracles. Which is true, I don't hear, but the person receiving the miracle must participate also. I do write sermons, I normally don't read them, but they're in here. Let me say it again for my 20 debt free people that's debt free already and don't know it. And the reason why I keep saying debt is after you're free from sin, debt is the next thing we need to be free from. And the devil's twin is student loan debt. I'll tell you that too. It won't leave you even after you get old. Miracles are so real but very scarce in the 21st century because People have been taught only God works miracles, which is true to an extent, but the person can get help. Receiving the miracle must participate also. Now, some of you I know personally and don't think it's you because I know you personally, but I know about 30 of you in here personally, and half of you are not where you should be personally because we know each other personally. So you keep on undercoverly getting jealous of what God is doing for others when you have the exact same access to do exactly what the rest of us do. But when I like you outside of church, don't mean I like you in church. You follow me? Because when I know what you're going through and you sit and don't worship God in church, but after church... There's a problem. Let me give you four examples. They're very quick. You understand it. You will say amen. The woman that got healed from the issue of blood would have not been cured if she didn't crawl and touch. All right. There goes you that are clapping. You're being blessed. When praises go up, prices come down. Y'all just stay with me. The issue is she could have believed it from the hospital and still been bleeding. But before she went there, y'all don't hear me, she didn't get cured because she had to touch his garment. See, all the fake theologians said, what? There is no scripture saying the cure was at the hem of his garment. The cure was there because her faith put it there. Because when she left, she said, if I can just get to the God. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And she was crawling while dizzy and bleeding and people calling her unclean. But she had to participate. I'm going to say this for 10 people who will jump out of the 20 for yourself. God says this year there'll be no ifs. God said once you do your part, the rest is up to me. The if is because you have not done your part. Second example, I'm about 28 minutes from screaming two minutes and give it up. Second example for three folk who catch this, blind Bartimaeus. Half of y'all ain't gonna like this. Would have never got his sight if he didn't scream. Even after the folk closest to Jesus said, be quiet. Oh, y'all gotta watch folk that's real close to God and so quiet. When he heard, faith coming by hearing, but after faith does something, your mouth got to participate. You got to put in work. See, some of you want to scream, but you got that silent neighbor near you. Like living in the boonies where you take a broom and touch the roof and tell them, be quiet, it's three in the morning. I'm from there. I ain't from, I ain't, you know, I ain't, I ain't from the burbs. I just was blessed to live here. And when they told him to shut up, the Bible said he got louder. 
which means for those who will scream, miracles are in a tone. And Jesus will pass you by. Y'all ain't talking. He will. But when he heard it was Jesus, he couldn't see him. So he sent sound to make sure he was heard. Jesus basically was lassoed by his feet by the words of a man's mouth. Because the Bible said he stood still. The deep saints probably tell him, keep on walking. It's just a crazy blind man. Jesus probably told the ones close that were quiet, he sees me better than you. He screamed and he got his sight. How would the 20 of you that are my inner core members today, how would you feel if I told you that by tomorrow 10 a.m., your sound will set you up for your miracle, right? Now, no, no, all you with jobs and you feel you got job security, stay quiet. You feel like you got permanent health security, stay quiet. But I serve a God that said, the Lord giveth. I'm going to prove to some of y'all that before me and Bishop White has finished this meeting by Friday, you're going to have something to show for it. No, no, literally. No ifs. Come on, help me preach. No ands. No buts. I come that they might have life. The word we got to get out of there is might. Got to find out what to do to make it possible. He cried out the more. And the man received his sight. The third example. Then we're going to the next level of tension. For the three folk that's pushing me out of the twenty. When Jesus spit on the ground and made clay out of the dirt and anointed the blind man who was born blind, he'd have never got cured if he didn't go wash. Uh-oh, yeah. He said, now everything you need, I already put it on you. Y'all ain't talk. Now you got to find out what to do with it. Go wash. Come on, push me. Yeah, yeah. Go wash in the pool. I'm hearing names now. This is crazy. But go wash in the pool of Siloam, which interpretation means scent. He didn't get cured right there from the spit, nor the dirt, nor the anointing. The Lord said, I put my hands on you. Now go put your hands in something and put it on what I put on you. So he got to Siloam, took the water, put it on top of what Jesus already put there. And because he's participating. Now, so far I've preached three sermons, but y'all won't give me credit for three. So let me say this before my voice goes and I abruptly stop and I hope I don't have to. Ten of you jump on this out of the 20. This is what I'll tell some of you about this year, especially this month. You won't know how you got there, but you'll know how you get back. You follow? The blind man don't know how he got there, but he sure saw his way Some of you going to get new jobs and not know how you got them. Y'all ain't talking, but you're going to know how to keep it. You're going to be shocked when they said your credit went through. Oh, hurry, hurry, sign the paper. The man that was laid at the pool of Bethesda. 38 years. Y'all gonna stay silent because I'm ready. The Bible says, and you can fix it up later, every year that pool was stirred. 
But what I don't like about the story, even though people make it seem like a great story, what I personally don't like about the story, and I have preference to have my rights for viewing the text, ten folk view it like this and scream, is one miracle a year ain't good. If God say, I'm going to bring one miracle to Zion a year, and the first person that does a certain thing will get it. Some of you are never getting a miracle. Because you think it's all God's responsibility. If God wants to do it, he can just do it. God said, oh, no, no, no. So what Jesus told this man with this infirmity, he said, wilt thou be made whole? The man then does what 50 of you are doing tonight without saying it, makes excuses. Every time I get ready, another person jumps ahead of me. That sounds like black church, didn't you jealous? Well, listen, I'd be running too if he told me I'm going to get a car. Why you can't run without one? See, I still, and if I had a good husband like her, I'd be speaking in tongues. Why you can't speak in tongues for yourself? I, I just, I don't get what the reserved praise is for. Why is the praise on hold? Lord, if you do this, then I'll do that. When scripture says, no, you draw nigh to me, then I'll draw nigh to you. Somebody that knows a miracle is flirting with you, shout yes. yes. Jesus basically tells him, because of you and I, the system of one miracle a year will now be broken. Oh, y'all don't hear me. See, you're not talking. He says, the person that gets in the pool will get healed and you will too. And he basically tells him for screamers, I'm going to bless you outside of the system. Y'all ain't talking. Uh-huh. I'm going to show people they got one a day, one a year, because that's an angel stirring that. But you talking to me. Y'all ain't. What got him the miracle was not the presence of Jesus, the conversation. In about 15 minutes, babies, we'll go to the next level. Will that be made whole? And they talk. Then Jesus tells him, if you really want to be cured, and I'm asking three people to scream for this, take up your bed. Which means participate. Huh? Take up the bed. Hold on, y'all not reading it. Let's get real to the letter, right? Because I need some screaming preachers. He said, before you can walk, take up your bed. Let what you're laying in know I ain't laying down no more. Y'all see, some of y'all are so frustrated, you taking it laying down. And the man took up his bed. And the Bible said he was made whole from that day forth. Deeper statement for theologians and scholars now. Two things. One is real simple. Push me, y'all, because I feel like I'm boring you. One is you have a responsibility to your miracle. I wish I had talkers. And your behavior will determine how long it stays. You don't get cured of diabetes to go back to eating pie. You understand, right? You have a responsibility to the maintenance of your miracle. If I'm born, you tell me. The second thing for me and Bishop White to talk about, Dr. Juliet, me and my elder brother, Edgar Meeks, and those that I talk to on the regular in, on this level, Hear this statement and somebody push me, then we'll get to the fancy stuff. Where principles are obeyed, miracles are not needed. Yeah. 
Am I sounding like you raised me right? That's... You need a financial miracle because you spent more money at the mall and on your head than you did paying rent. See, where principles... So, for 30 folk who will jump and get over it, God said, first admit to me you made a mistake is why you need this miracle. You did a few things out of order. Y'all ain't talking. You did not listen to what I told you to do. I think I'm running folk away and boring them. Bishop, if this makes sense, will you high five me in the Holy Ghost? If we want to talk about marriage, then everything is found back in its genesis, the book of the beginnings, in its genius, in its genealogy, in whatever you want to call it, in the genetics. But we learn that God never gave Adam Eve just because he got lonely. That's not true. So marriage is not for lonely people. See, no principle. Some of you ain't talking. You'd have been married one and a half times. You can talk. Tired of being alone. Marriage was not created to get, get, to get you delivered from fornication like they told us. If for, because if marriage could cure fornication, then where did adultery come from? So now, that's not true. There are folk married still lonely. If y'all going to stand up, I need you to talk louder than the quiet folk. Because we got a group of the silence of the lambs. Do you hear the lambs crying, aging? They don't want to talk. But they are recipients of breaking the miracles or principles. He gave Adam a job. He told Adam, work, name everything. Adam's job was basically with his mouth. Oh, yeah. All he had to do was speak, and whatever he called it is what it was. Y'all, so faith without works. Adam's work was his speech. Y'all, oh y'all got quiet. He cut kangaroo, antelope. He had to come up with a, you know, lot of names. Probably took him thousands of years. Then the Bible said he grew lonely, and he only grew lonely because he had no more work. Then God, here's the principle for screamers, made for a working man a help me, not a lazy man, a wife. You follow? If you study the Bible, you will find principles that if you obey them, miracles will not be necessary. You need a miracle because you rush the process. Am I boring, y'all? I'm going to get off that. I'm done with that. So at this wedding where they ran out of wine, and I'm going to do this now, and I need 10 folk to be in my corner and don't let me go astray. I'm going to say the word wine, 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 wine wine because y'all so quick to find Jesus and avoid the wine the text ain't about Jesus first it's about he wouldn't be needed if they didn't run out of wine wine and some of y'all can't win souls because you're good at talking about Jesus but not about life So sinners don't want to tell you their problems because you're going to frown and cringe like you ain't never did what they doing and try to tell them just give it to Jesus. Give it a name. What we giving to him? Now mama, you done been saved since you too. You can handle this part. Do you know how many people would be delivered if they could trust you with their business? Do you know, oh boy, I wish I could preach. Do you know how many of us that are Holy Ghost feel who have made mistakes? Well, y'all ain't going to tell the truth. Since you've been saved. 
and you don't need nobody talking about you you hard on yourself and you just looking for one person that you can say hey I don't want to talk to you about Jesus tonight I want to talk to you about my addiction What you mean? No, see, I can't talk to you because you're acting like this is not real. Now, I need to dispel a myth, and I need two theologians and Holy Ghost field folk to scream to let me know you ain't scared. Uh, the Jesus y'all keep preaching to me about, <laughs> I accept him, but I don't think you accept him totally because the things that disgust you don't disgust him. He knew he was at a booze drinking wedding. Hold on. And he did not turn down the invitation. You know how many sinners want to go to church? Y'all don't want me to preach this. But they want to come as they are but not leave as they came. But soon as they walk in, they've been judged. And now the new churches that are growing up that ain't got no Holy Ghost with 10,000 people following them is because the church looks like a club. Y'all ain't talking. So now the sinner feels at home as soon as they walk in. Because they can't come to us and not be judged. Some of you act too afraid to talk because some of these people I'm talking about is your own family. So I wrote this statement, then I'll take one more risk and clean it up. I wrote this statement for 30 of you who will scream, I'm taking 10 new members in. They would have never ran out of wine if somebody there didn't overindulge. Uh-oh, I just lost everybody. <laughs> Help me, Bishop White, I need you. When they planned weddings, they already knew how many guests were coming and they purchased seven days of wine not to run out so if they ran out at this wedding someone y'all don't want to help me preach either overindulge or the bartender over poured for tips y'all don't hear me or somebody showed up that was not on the list and the next time i preach something that's just normal and some of y'all duck like you don't drink i'm gonna start prophesying your addictions because you are the reason why folk can't get saved because they're hoping somebody near them say amen because they already saw you at the club last week. They saw you. I got mother helping me. The rest of y'all ain't got to help me now. They saw your car, they saw your Facebook, they know your social media. But yet you in church acting too sober. You think that posture makes people not find you out. Bishop preached this one day, preach it in the, in the deep way so I can preach it in the the other way, how come sin is done with activity, movements, talk, eyes, but when you get saved, you cannot do anything and be saved? You don't have to move, you ain't got to clap. Let me see a sin that functions without doing nothing. Then you give your life to God and there's nothing to do. At this wedding, somebody overindulged. Now, this statement is risky. And I want you all to hang in there for a few more minutes. This statement is risky, but 10 folk with the Holy Ghost will stand up to be honest with people. 
Some of y'all that are saved that have fallen short, which we call sin and we don't sugarcoat because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if we sin and confess it, I don't hear no deep. He's faithful and just because some of y'all act like you ain't sinned since you've been saved. I have. But let me move forward. And let me not make any excuses, but let me make biblical sense and see who will scream. None of you are going to hell because you made a mistake and sinned. You're going to hell because you overindulge. And when you overindulge, y'all don't want me to preach, that means your conviction level is very low. That also means you are no longer afraid of the God that you read about in the Bible. And at that time, I wish y'all would make me preach. He makes life so difficult because you have broken so many principles that now you are in the category of, I need a miracle. Uninvited guests showed up, bartender trying to get bigger tips. That was the one that Mel laughed on, bartender trying to get bigger tips from overpouring. People brought folk with them that were not invited. Oh, y'all. And on that note, in my green words, because I have a color system that I use if I read. So let me say this for 30 folk who will jump for yourself. God said, the first miracle I'm going to give you is I'm going to change your company. So that when you're about to make the mistake, the new company say, you've come too far. Slow down. You, you, oh, y'all, you got too much to lose. And if you scream on this, then you're there because some of you don't like the teaching, but you need it to be truthful. But 10 of you catch this and scream. Some of you may not believe this. God's already started your whole miracle because you don't even want to be around certain people no more. You have lost the unction, the thrive, the passion. You say hi as fast as you can. Keep driving. Don't stop. Got to do something. Something in you. And the real pinnacle of you getting a miracle, the first miracle is God changing your company for one person who will scream for me and the bishop and scream loud, is you're really in a season of enjoying yourself. That's a miracle. I'm taking myself out to eat. I'm going to take myself to the movie. You know what? You're beginning to like what you're becoming. And too afraid to jeopardize it. Now this is for women who will scream. And if you don't, I'm sorry sisters. When God gives women a miracle, you know when your future's ready, when your past wants you back. You finally like yourself. Oh, the men got quiet on that. I don't know what happened. In about 10 minutes, you can push me. You can push me because I'm out of gas now. We must be careful not to read into things beyond what we should. Push me three people. Because the text is not really about wine. Even though that word jumps out in the text because deep saints don't like that word. The text is really, the focus of the text for a screamer is about servanthood. See, no claps. You know why? Don't nobody serve. You want to be served, and that's why they ran out. Don't act like you ain't never seen a movie. You go to a high-class 
Millionaire, billionaire function, they walk around with the drinks on the tray and whoever's in the house just takes it and keeps talking. Tray empty. They got to go to the back, get another tray. People want to be served, but it's crazy that you won't see that you can't be served without a servant. Oh, yeah. And now here's where I want to flip it for two women over here. One brother over here will scream. And that is those who are servants are finally about to be served. Because you have for years served everybody else. You know what I mean? They didn't give you a tip. They didn't give you a hug. They didn't say thank you. And the Lord kept using you. Refill your tray. Go back out there and serve some more people. And you're angry, but you can't lose your job. So you smile as soon as you come out to the job. In six minutes, push me, young men. <laughs> the text is more about knowing who to run to when you run out. If 50 of you wake up, you're about to see a change by tomorrow morning. Maybe... They ran out so they could find out who to run to. Let me ask a question for my three members in the 20 who's with me. Don't you feel funny that when folk need you, you make it happen for them? But when you need them, they always tell you, if you'd have called me two days early, And some of you still using hand sign language. Maybe God should take your voice and let you really learn. That'll be the day you want your voice back. No, no, that's my ministry. God has given me for years that if they don't learn to talk to me, to open their mouths to me, from the heart the mouth speaks, I cannot honor anything that they are asking me for. Here is how, I'm almost ready, they did what they did. On this note, I need some express praisers who will talk quick. Number one, they probably knew the only way to get Jesus to the wedding is we better invite his mother. Now, if Jesus is as good as a son to Mary as Bishop White is to Dr. Juliet, then there would be some places that if she chose to go that he didn't like, that he would have to go to. Oh, y'all look quiet. Or if she was hanging with a group of people and he knew something of one, but she was going to go, that he would be like, I'm going with you. Y'all mighty quiet. Jesus probably showed up because he wanted to protect the reputation, I don't hear nobody, of his mother who was the Virgin Mary and she's on her way to a booze drinking wedding. I'm about to say this to some of you that are about to have the greatest year of your life if you catch this in screen. God said, I'm changing your company because I need somebody that can protect you when you're about to make the mistake of your life. You need friends that's going to tell you, don't mess up this season. Y'all ain't talking. You already got a miracle. Come on, let's stick with the principles now. We got away with this last year. Let's not, let's not try it this year. When I'm quiet, that's when y'all talk. Then Jesus, he covers his back by doing something too. He tells his disciples, you going with me. 
If one go, that used to be a New York creed, but y'all didn't. Mary goes, Jesus goes, the disciple goes, and now this is how the story goes. Please, 10 of you, push me like I'm preaching. I'm breaking out in the sweat. I'm getting better. The servants. I didn't mean to yell. That's automatic. The servants knew not to take the request directly to Jesus. The servants are basically saying in modern day preach style, we can't ask God for this. They held a servant meeting. Y'all better get two people near you to talk and said, there's another way we can get it. How? Go to his mama. She don't drink either. But let's just get her to put the need in the ear of Jesus. The servant said, Miss Mary, Yes, servants. We appreciate y'all being here and our, ooh, I want to preach this. Our jobs are in jeopardy. What you mean? We're going to lose good jobs and won't be able to pay our family bills. See, y'all never heard it like this because we done ran out of wine. Now, Miss Mary, yes, servants. We don't drink either because we on the job. But if we run out of what will keep this wedding functioning properly. Oh, y'all look, see, we are going to lose our jobs, which then make us lose our money, which then makes us lose uh, our homes, which then makes us lose. Uh, and he said, she said, okay, y'all don't drink. No, I don't drink. And I'm going to take your request to who can drink. Oh, yeah. See, some of you ain't talking, you enjoying the story, right? But some of you may not know this. You only upset because people can do what you can't. They say, we, we have run out of wine. Mary, they didn't tell her go to Jesus. But she knew wasn't no stores open. Oh, young. It'll take too long to raise up a grapevine. So she tips over. Wish I had a church. To the only one that could make things happen right away. I want you to just grab somebody's hand like they're not judgmental and tell them God's going to make it happen right away. Now, if they didn't get happy, that's because they too sober. Because what you ingest changes your behavior. I mean, somebody just told you God's going to do it right away and you said, thank you. He's not going to do it. Because your behavior does not match his authority. She walks over to Jesus. You can get your mic ready if you want to. And she says, son, he says, yes, ma. These people have run out of wine. <laughs> Jesus then respectfully looks over at his mother and he says to her wish I had a touch in any respectable manner woman my hour has not come some of you that are talking you're probably going to get a miracle by tomorrow and you that are not because you broke the principle you'll be the same She's basically asking her son, Jesus, for those who will jump, they need a miracle before time. I know that 
You don't want your first miracle to be connected to this subject. But don't see it as you providing wine. See it as you providing a service. Y'all ain't talking. I'm trying not to hoop, but then Jesus has to take into consideration, May Retha. I cannot let my mother look bad. Uh -oh. He knew who he was, but he didn't want people to think he was not her son. She comes out. She didn't come out with a yes answer from God because Jesus never said he would do it. Y'all help me preach then. And when, oh Lord, uh, she goes over, I'm about to stop, over to the servants, she says to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, just do it y'all ain't talking to me and then uh, when she walks out you can ease in real smooth uh, Jesus steps on the scene and tells them go get empty pots y'all ain't talking to me which simply means for three folk that will yell you don't need a miracle until you run out Y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, tell your neighbor I've already ran out. Y'all, he are not talking to Brother Hall. Uh, shake your neighbor's hand uh, and tell your neighbor, have you run out of anything? Tell them if you have. Uh, God is about to, to give you a miracle. Oh Lord, uh, and if the person next to you uh, is not happy uh, while you're talking to them, uh, don't give them uh, what God's about to give you a lot of. Oh Lord, uh, every now, every now, every now and then, uh, you got to praise God on E. I don't hear nobody and let the devil know the God that I serve, he's still able. Shake somebody to the right or left of you. I'm feeling you, brother, and I'm almost there. And tell your neighbor tomorrow you will be on F. Tell him God is about to give you more than you ever had before. But uh, don't wait till the battle is over. Yeah, I'm trying to behave. But you got to shout right now. And while you're praising, while you're praising the Lord, uh, he's about to fill your cup. I got 30 seconds left in me all. Uh, so act like God is good. Uh, and act like you got an empty cup in your hand. Uh, and raise it, raise it up to God and say, Lord, fill my cup. I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Y'all ain't talking now. That's why your cup is still empty. But if you know God's gonna fill it, throw your head back one time and say, Bread of heaven, feed me, feed me till I won't no more. Throw your head back and say, Yeah. Come on as loud as you can, clap your hands and say, Yeah. All right. Find one person, find one person, thank you. I'm about to close, find one person. Hiya. He's speaking.
That's that old school anointing. I told you he would play until I wouldn't have to preach. Hold one neighbor's hand and look at me as we get ready to close this. The Kashibri Atusketepakai. The Hope Shandai. The Holy. Yes, Lord. Somebody throw your head back and shout, Yes, Lord. I didn't say say it, I said shout yes, Lord. Listen to this. Listen to how I'm closing and we're going to dance. This is not offering. Listen, there's a praise that must be released. Cut me up a little out there. There's a praise that must be released. Listen to me closely. Walter Davis, elder. Jesus never, not that loud, Jesus not that high, Jesus never told his mother he was going to do it. Three prophecies or words of knowledge, and if you scream, you will be the recipient. God said, tell y'all this, this year I'm going to do some things, but I ain't telling you. But it's going to be something that you need real, real, real bad. And you that opened your mouth, you're on the list. And you that didn't, it is your fault for not practicing principle. He said, if you delight yourself. I don't do this in the middle of the sermon, but the Lord said, Todd, I'm very happy tonight. That's what he's telling me. He said, tell the population of people who believe I'm still a miracle working God and that I'll give them a miracle per month. That if they dance out of nowhere right now, I'll do the first one by tomorrow morning. And you got 30 seconds to hurry up and do what you do. If you ain't got no footwork, you better have some handwork. That sound you're making, that's you doing your part. You're participating in your miracle. The Lord said, Todd, before you give them the prophetic clothes, I need a group of them to dance again, but tell them it's for this. Tell them every individual in their family that's been oppressed by a spirit, every bill that is causing you to become depressed, 
He said, if you dance like I've already saved them and paid them, I'll start working on it right now. You got 30 seconds and you got time to get Music stops, mouths continue. The last two things that I want to say and hold one person's hand if they are available. Don't reach behind, don't do none of that church stuff. Be comfortable. No, no, don't contort your body. If you don't have a hand, hold your own. Enjoy you by yourself. Hallelujah. Two last things I want to say, Bishop. If it makes sense, just wave your hand at me. Look at me, because you need this. Jesus never said out of his mouth the word wine one time. It's in the text, but it never came out of his mouth. Oh, y'all are missing it. You're not talking. You're being infected by your neighbor. Come on, be the cure. If you find out what they really don't have, you wouldn't want to be like them. Just stay here. He never said the word wine the only word that came out of his mouth meeks was water 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 pots fill it water servant said wine mother said wine jesus knew they needed wine but he never said the word wine out of his mouth never touched the water never spit in the water never changed the water Now, if I give you this and you dance on your own and they catch you, you will definitely start being debt free. The Bible does not say Jesus turned water into wine. That's what people who gave a subheading said. What turned the water into wine was their obedience. Y'all in? She said, whatsoever he say do, if you do what he tell you, you'll get what you ask for. And God said, tell him, praise me now. And I'll give you what you asked for.
Obedience is better. If they did not obey what he said, they would have never gotten what they wanted. He didn't turn it. They obeyed. Last but not least, you're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God, and if they act too quiet, let them go. Because they might start taking all your money. I hear some of you. Prophet Hall, uh, are you really as blessed as you say? I really am. I really am. And most of it is because of my mouth. Some is my feet. Look at me. Here's the conclusion. Then I'm going to go high five the bishop. Fill the water pots with water, fill them up to the brim. 20 or 30, 20 or 30 firkins a piece. I think I learned this in y'all's school. That's about 28 to 30 gallons. Thank you, Mother. 30 gallons times six is 180 gallons of wine. All right, let me change it and fix it so you scream. It was 130 gallons of water. There's no script in the text that said it's changing or, or anybody saying it looks like wine. The way we know it's wine, and then I'm going to see who will go off, is Jesus said, draw out the water. So it was still water. Some of y'all act like you're going to step and finally read the Bible tonight. You should. Because it's the first miracle. Draw out the water. Give it to the governor. Then the verse says, Bishop, help me. And when he got it, he tasted the water that was made wine. Slow roll. I'm done because y'all left the building. He tasted the water that was made and only the one that tasted it was the one that described it as being the best let me give you my scenario and see if a hundred of you clap and stomp because you want a miracle by tomorrow two things a miracle doesn't have to look like a miracle to be a miracle and some of y'all got a miracle and don't know it because it looked like ain't nothing changed. Y'all ain't talking, but you don't even know. You already have the miracle. See, if you believed it, you'd have been a little more excited, but you're waiting on something to change. When the change does not begin in what you asked for, it begins in you. And last but not least, you're holding someone's hand who's about to get a new zip code. Be thrusted into a new tax bracket. And you that are happy doing what you're doing, we urge you to keep doing it. But don't get upset with those who are trying not to do it anymore. You ready? Bishop, on this note, just point the finger so I know I'm not out here by myself. There's nobody in the text visibly saying the water has turned to wine. Nobody. There is no voices in the scripture, not even the servant saying it's wine. Nobody. But the reason why they're going to get a miracle is they don't question the water. If you need a miracle, you don't get to tell God how to do it, right? You don't hear nobody telling Jesus, uh, we said wine, not water. They're obeying the order, whatever he tell you to do. Come on, we're closing. 
the way we know it's wine, and this is where I want the 20 people to scream, even in the back, you people that need miracles will go crazy on this, is the Bible says, I'm going to read it just like it should, and Elder Walter Davis and I grew up in the same church, and he used to always beat me in Bible study and knowing more scriptures, and then he'll call me and tell me I didn't quote it right. I'm wondering what he's going to tell me tonight. But this is what I want you to remember, Walter Davis, better known as Gobby before we became elder. Let me say this to 50 people who scream. The Bible says, when they served it to the governor, when he tasted the water that was made wine, this is the only way, <coughs> excuse me, that we can make sense out of it. And if you can at least try to uh, understand a real miracle without knowing how it works, scream on this part, because this is the closest I can get to explaining it. And 50 y'all go off. The Bible said when he tasted the water, that meant when he opened his mouth and put water in there before he swallowed, it became wine. Y'all follow? He tasted the change. Oh, y'all, y'all are here. And the Bible said, oh, taste and see. I got to get out of here. That the Lord is good. And some of you, if you just open your mouth and let it go in. God said about time you reopen your mouth, things will have changed. Just grab somebody and say, I need them to change. I need them to change. All right, he's testing me. I like it. When it come back, it'll be back. You're holding the hand of a neighbor. I need them to change. When he, we're closing, tasted the water that was made wine, not turned. Sir, preacher, doctor, let me just explain this because I know you know things too. Water cannot ferment. It is impossible for water to change. If you leave a cup of water, it's going to be water when you come back every time. So the Lord told me to tell the same 50 who will scream for yourself, I'm about to change something that ain't supposed to change. Because when it's a miracle, I have to be the only ingredient that can make this thing turn out like it should. He tasted water that became wine while it was in his mouth. And then he expressed, I'm closing, to those who were there, something is not right. And he admitted these two things, Walter, and ten folk will scream, that if he gave them 180 gallons of this, and they were at the final day of the wedding, he did not give them a refill to redrink. He didn't give them that to start over indulging. I wish I had a screaming young man. It is improper to come as a guest without a wedding gift. So Jesus basically gave them a new lease on life. 180 gallons. You got two choices. Either you let folk drink it again or you sell it. Or oh, I don't hear nobody. And the governor gave him the price tag. He said, and if you sell it, sell it for what you want because it ain't from here. Y'all didn't read that? He said, I don't know where this is from, which means God's about to give some of you something that people need that they can't get nowhere else. They can try to be you, dress like you, but they'll never be you because God has given you something that's not from here. And to get that, you had to run out. And then you had to run too. Then you had to learn, stop serving people who over indulge. So God said, tell some of you that's from the block, as of tomorrow morning, we're going to re-up. See, that was block talk. But for the street, y'all going to get free refills. But from those that understand, we're going to re-up. 
And this time, stop giving everything away free. Just because that's your friend. You're holding the hand of a debt-free worshiper. Hi-ya! Bishop, I'm sure you've preached this text in so many different ways. <clears throat> was talking to one of my rabbis, Jewish friends, <clears throat> and he told me, he says, you need to start making folk go a little deeper into their study. I said, well, the church I'm at, they ain't got to go no deeper. They the deepest church I know. He said, I'm not talking about a particular church. He said, people. He says, understand that Jesus allowed the miracle. I hope somebody up front who loved the Bible screen, he asked for a dirty ceremonial pot to do it. And God says, what the real miracle is going to be for one scream in the back because the front missed it is people will no longer talk about what's on you because of what he placed in you. They ain't going to call you dirty after you have what they need. He didn't make wine in wineskins. He put them in water pots. Ceremonial pots. Wash feet and dishes. He said if they want it bad enough, they will ignore what's on you. To focus on what I just put in you. What makes you a miracle is not what people have on you. Is that what they have on you never got in you. You know how many things in here I've heard that folk had on me, but it never got in me. Your family shall be saved this year. And I don't mean in the middle. I'm talking about in the first quarter. If your mouth ain't open, you didn't drink it. Drinks on the house now, babies. You got to swallow this. You got you to gotta take it to the head. No chaser. And some of you acting like you don't know these terms because you Holy Ghost filled. And three of you laughing with a bottle under your bed, in your bedroom, in your refrigerator. Don't play with me. This ain't the day to judge people. This is a day to help people. Bring me to Christ. Not to you. You holding the hand of a person that should have never made it. Never. If everything they did wrong is true, there's no way they should have made it. If God didn't have plans. I'm glad he had plans for me. Because the plans I have for myself, these, what I'm doing don't look nothing like it. Prophet Hall, did you want to preach? No. Then when I started liking it, the rumors started. I didn't want it no more. You're crazy to just want to preach. You're drunk. Because you don't know what's coming after you. I just don't believe people have to struggle when they're doing the will of God. Well, then tell God that. <laughs> Blessed are ye when people say, oh, man of evil against you, false for my sake. Think it not strange concerning fire. It's coming, babies. I got drunk once, Mel. Y'all don't mind me not closing with Jesus. He's in my clothes. I'll talk to my brother Edgar. I got drunk one day. I got drunk. I lost something very close to me. It almost made me suicidal. People don't care that I drank. They talking about he ain't saved, but they couldn't stop me from committing suicide. 
because I didn't have nobody to run to that day after a season of dealing with this, I ran to that drink. Mm -hmm. I can't forget that day because I knew what I was doing was wrong. Yes, sir. I knew, I, I said, the Lord going to kill me because mm -hmm. that's how y'all taught me. He going to kill you. So I was preparing for an early exit. Mm -hmm. But I had nobody else to run to. After I got drunk, here's the humorous part. I couldn't believe, and somebody who used to drink should be able to talk to me, when, when people that are drunk get drunk, they start talking to God. Now, mother, the only reason why you hear folk laughing, they've been there. And I started telling God, why did you leave me like this? I, why couldn't I have said that to him sober? Why? The Lord said, you came to me because you ran out. People ran out on you. Then that ain't all that happened. The Lord beat me so bad, not with things that people think, but for two talkers, I got sick. Ran to the bathroom. See, these college students, I want to talk. And I had that same conversation we all had. God, if you get this out of me, oh, y'all, I promise. And I woke up, I hope somebody support me, on the bathroom floor asleep. Looking at myself on the floor. Looking at the toilet, having to clean the bathroom. And the Lord told me, nobody else told me because they weren't there for me. I only took the risk because I wanted other folk to face their issues and let's get over this. The Lord told me, and I hope somebody screamed for me, what you took in you wasn't strong enough. He said, it came out, I'm still in. The issue is, When you are overwhelmed, you overindulge. Hold hands. Children of God, apostles, prophets, if y'all would stop being so judgmental. Preach against sin. Tell folk they're wrong. But make sure you don't act like you're the only one right. I don't hear anybody talking. Because the drinks that's on the house is your story being poured into somebody else's life. And if I come to you, I need you to be able to fill me up. And don't give me just all the tongue speaking. Address my void. I don't hear nobody. And don't make me feel sinful when you finish. Let the dirty pot be filled with something that's not from here. You're holding the hand of a forgiven person now. I'm done. Tomorrow's going to be a day of miracles. We're close. going to be a day of miracles. Somebody shout yes. It's going to be a day of miracles. It's going to be a wonderful day of miracles. Shake my hand, come here. What's your name? Robert what? Taylor. God's hand is on your life. Y'all act like y'all concerned. God is about to give you the mantle that's going to help restore your whole family. God says past eight years have been a little different. I don't even want to use the word difficult. I'm now going to say different. God said, but when you praise him tonight, he'll make sense of it all and give you everything that you needed that you lost back. But a certain person you lost, you don't need back. Uh oh, hallelujah. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit use you 
in these next few years like you've never been used of God before. I know who you are in the spirit, but there was not a platform for you yet. God said, but tell him I've just torn down one to make one for him. Are y'all going to help Robert? If I told you that you're about to sign a new lease papers concerning where you live, would you believe me? I'm going to have you, I ain't going to have you run long, Robert. I'm going to have you run to the front there and back saying it's done. When you do it, what's your name? You. Speak loud. Jonathan what? When you run and say it's done, if he runs quicker than you because he can, God said, I'm going to give him two businesses with his name on it. And the Lord said, tell you, you will be the wealthiest person in your family. It should have happened three years ago, but God said, I'm going to do it now. Take your run, Robert, and say it's done. Leave him back there. Let him praise God. Let him alone. Can I have a piece of paper? Can I have a small piece of paper? Nobody got paper around here. An envelope, something. I write like a chicken, but I'm giving this to you. This is only one thing. I'll write something deeper later. But when them boys ran, this is what flashed in front of my face. And I'll let you see it. All right. Now, y'all hold hands. As soon as they ran up here, the Holy Ghost showed me it across the screen. Now that she read it, I know it ain't going to make sense to Bishop, I don't know where he went, but he's somewhere around here. I know he's ministering to somebody. This may not make sense at all. It may not even be necessary. But when the young man Robert ran and then John ran and went past him on the screen, I wrote to your mom. The Lord said, prayer answered. And then I saw a check fall out the sky with the church on it. It said, said $10.2 million. Now, people think I'm playing. I just wrote it on the paper. Now, if y'all can be that sober on that type of announcement. She will show you the Holy Ghost. Boom, boom. The Lord said, write it. I wasn't going to write it. He said, write it. Give it to her first. When I did that, the bakuse plantea. <coughs> Holy Ghost also said this to me for ten folk who will jump for yourself or act like you've lost your mind. He said, when I wrote their check, I just wrote yours. <laughs> For the next two months, you're going to hear about miracle checks with all your members. Watch. They're going to be like, Bishop?
For the last time this time, hold your neighbor's hand and be happy for the neighbor. Can I have another piece of paper? All right, hold, hold that hand and look happy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Young man, what's your name? You. Donnell what? Walk towards me. Pastor, I'll have you shake his hand in a minute. <clears throat> How long you been married? When the pastor Oh, I'm writing real personal things, huh? When the pastor shakes your hand, the Lord said, I'm giving you and your wife a real miracle. In the marriage, If the devil had his way, the child would live and she would die on the table because of the way she's carrying. This would not be the first loss, but the Lord said, after midnight tonight, he's setting your life and hers on a new path. All of this is going to be a miracle, and you will never, ever worry about money again. God said, as a man concerned about his family and love and things not going right, God said, at midnight, your life will be like a fairy tale story. I don't hear y'all. God says, tell you he don't apologize, but he took you through a two and a half year storm. He said, tell him there was nothing he could have done. I had to qualify him for this next level. Don't run from ministry because it's in your loins. Been there for a long time. When Bishop shakes his hand and prays for him, all of you that need a miracle, I'm talking about like before Friday, you got 30 seconds to Shabbat God with the fruit of your lips. Go ahead, Bishop. Even you that are online, come on, victorious viewers. Uh-oh. Let's hold hands for the last time. Hello. 
Go ahead. We don't praise alone. Yeah! I wish I had a voice. I'd go with you, I promise you. Revival ain't broke yet, but it's on its way. You may not believe what I'm going to tell you. God is putting this entire book in your heart. Because you're going to be teaching it to people in corporate sector. A lot of people get ministry and think of a church. They think of a pulpit. You might even go there. I have no idea. But God said, tell him, I'm giving him this because I'm about to make him feed the marketplace. They're going to want to hear the truth about who Jesus is. And I need him in a creative way to feed it. Tell him, I will give his body complete restoration. I will give him what looks like severance pay to do my job. The word of God is going to become a part of your everyday existence. And tell the modern day Job everything he lost, I'm going to give it back to him. Tell him I owe him 25 years of stuff. And tell him because he's gotten wounded by so many false preachers, regain his strength. Help me cure the kingdom. Not in anger, but in love. The devil thought he could destroy your family. But God said, tell modern day Job, I give and I take it away, but I double in the end. Uh oh, there go glory. I don't hear no claps, but there go glory. I don't hear, I said, there go glory. I, don't, I said, there go glory. There you go. Once it come out of that mouth, there go glory. I don't hear nobody. There go glory. There go glory. Y'all praising them too laid back. But there go glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is, I love y'all, this is the last time for this time. Hold a neighbor's hand and be intentional. I just want to hold yours anyhow. Hallelujah. 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 We're leaving now, y'all. We are. We're going to give and we're leaving. Tomorrow night you need to come back with somebody. Because the things that I'm seeing, they are not normal. I'm wondering whether God took the throat so I wouldn't hoop so I could do what I'm doing. I don't know what's happening. Hiya! Glory. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, Lord. Hello. Hello, you married. Talk to me. All right. What island are you from? Haiti. How did you get to this service tonight? I know, but how did you get here? Did you drive? 
Yeah, he took her. How long have you been divorced? Aren't you divorced? Uh, yeah. Um, seven years, maybe ten years. Ten years, seven, maybe ten. You really don't care. I said to a woman on Sunday morning in that section, I asked her what was her last name. Uh, Were you here Sunday morning? Yes, yeah, yeah. And I asked her, was she okay with her name changing? Mm -hmm. And I told her that whoever it is has been watching her closely for at least a year. Where you work? In the hospital. South Mercy. South, South Mercy Community Hospital. What you do? Uh, I'm a lead tech and blood bank technologist. Yeah. How long you been there? Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20. Are you against me telling you? Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, already? <laughs> Are you against me relaying the word of the Lord to you that don't be so harsh because a gentleman on the second floor is going to ask you to go to lunch. Amen. Are you against that? I don't know nobody here. Right, but uh, will you be okay? <laughs> if not, I know plenty of women in here who will, but I'm trying to help you. Because if God is hooking it up, you can't get no better. What's your name? Where you work? Do you know her? You know her very well. Would you be okay if God got in the man to take care of her right and ask her to go to lunch? She all right? Wouldn't that make sense? When's your birthday? She's so nervous right now, I don't know why he held my hand. <laughs> He's been watching you for one month. Yeah. One thing I've learned about women is sometimes they be like, no, no, but in their heart they be like, holy ghost. But she's serious. When he approaches you, do not give him a hard time. He is sent by God. It's your choice. But when he approaches you, do not be harsh. He is sent by God. Don't be harsh. He is sent by God. Sometime the... Uh-oh, now she wants answers. Uh -uh, see, now, hold on, don't go nowhere. No, no. Uh -uh. I just said that, but no, she went too far. I was going to go a little deeper, but I'm staying there. Hold hand. I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about me. I get tired of God using me to tell everybody else who they're going to be with, but our gifts never tell us what's ours, you know. Sometimes I go to my room, I'll be like, I can't stand this gift. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit score is going up 100 points. Because a good name. A father has to leave inheritance for his children, children, but that's not just money, that's a good name. The name White will go down as, as a great name. Kennedy's, Halls. You got to make sure your name is strong. So that when your children mention it, they'll be like, oh, that's who your father is? Come on in here. No reservations. Just pick the car. We'll do the paperwork later. Y'all follow me? Ask God to bless your name. Just go and tell God, bless my name. <clears throat> Play softly. Heads bowed, eyes closed.
Bless my name. Some of us are on E. Tonight I will not overindulge you in the offering. But the Lord said, tell everyone to sow $40 tonight. And when I say everyone, I don't use that word loosely. God said, everyone can do it, even if it hurts you. God said, if you're on E, I'll fill you up. By tomorrow, 20 or 30 of us are going to receive a miracle, and I'm claiming myself to be one. You better talk about it or you won't get it. I'm claiming it. Who's a licensed hairstylist but don't do hair? Is anybody in here licensed to do hair but not doing hair? Talk to me loud. Well, the other person ain't talk loud enough. I don't do hands. How are you? What are you doing now? Taking care of your grandmother. So that's the reason why you're not doing hair? Or you just stop. You don't want to, right? The Holy Ghost told me to tell you something. He said, tell her, I am going to create an unusual business for her. Tell her, I cannot give her the reasons why things are happening with your grandmother. But tell her, I'm going to let her still make all of her money from home. The Holy Ghost also said, tell you, all of the ups and downs you had to go through for 13 years. And that almost literally broke you, like almost broke you, pulled you away from church and all. God says, in the next 90 days, I'm going to restore it all back to her somebody shout yes she needs you in this area wait a minute I need I need to ask a question move all the way do you have any kids where is she because the Lord says the devil is trying to separate and take her far, far. But God said he was going to wait 90 days. But this is real now. The Lord said, tell her, because she praised me and didn't fight what you said. Tell her in four days, I'm going to turn her daughter all the way back around. Somebody with a loud mouth help her. Every person in here whose child has been dealing with drugs or witchcraft, it will be broken in 48 hours. I know y'all don't believe me because you're quiet, but in 48 hours, God says, I'm going to make something happen. Excuse me. Hello. You have children? How many? Give me the youngest child's name. Danielle, where is she? In Atlanta, what does she do? Have y'all talked kindly recently? And what was the conversation in short? Her. All right. I was going to tell you, Bishop, but when I made that announcement about witchcraft, somebody prayed it against your child. This your what? Hold on, you heard what she said? I told you, said the person she's with. The ditto story of the one I just told you about the woman there. The Lord says, by 2 a.m. in the morning, he is going to send an angel to wrestle with the... We got to close. Did she go to college? She stopped. The witchcraft made her stop and she got into two other things and one of them I will not divulge because you know about it. It's the thing that I told you about the other woman. 
the Lord said, tell you, give him seven days of praise during the fast. And I will destroy the yoke of the influence that the person has on your daughter. And this is being done immediately. And somebody with big mouths and happy hands use them to the glory of God. Everyone, even if you're given by debit credit, I need you to walk by the. F I need you. Tomorrow is going to be. Tomorrow's going to be. Don't don't dance them. Tomorrow's going to be very unusual. I need every person so in the forty, because God says I'm up to something great. If you just do it just do it and the rest will happen come now let's sow it at the foot of the man of god every person every especially if you are retired give god some of that retirement money oh. Oh. Oh, Lord. Three people came here mad that you didn't get a prophecy. We're not your psychic friend. If you come for the right reason, he'll talk to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you have 50, don't get no change, leave it. God will bless you. Trust me on this. What I see is way bigger than your offering. Let me take it for you, mom. Doc, Dr. White's offering. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Offering is worship, so don't come quiet. Hallelujah. Everyone is sowing their 40. Everyone. No one excluded. Hey there, Jeff. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of you better be here. You have an appointment with God on tomorrow. You really do. After you've given, remain standing. Bishop will give us the final directives. I know there are five or six of you upset because you didn't get a prophecy tonight. Don't rush God. Keep pressing. He saves the best for last. If you didn't get it at your church, don't come in here bullying us. Let God do it in his time. Somebody shout hallelujah again. Bishop White, God is getting in your account. I won't say the number, but it's Bank of America. God is showing me a transaction. It's pretty huge. It's in Bank of America. I would that God do it with Wells Fargo, because that's my bank. Everyone standing. Are you? No, seriously, I see numbers too. That means something else is happening in me. And this has been a long time since he's gone this deep. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Can I just touch you? Is it legal? Hallelujah. You are welcome. Hold on. Yes, Lord. 
This one here got the Holy Ghost. Come on, see you under. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, let her dream it and wake up to it. I don't know why I feel a healing in a dream. Y'all think I'm playing my shot number hope. I feel a healing. This is going to be a year of miracles. When I put the mic in his hand, give God glory for our shepherd, our leader, our prelate. My God, I love you. When he touches the mic, I want you to look at your neighbor, see if that's been the right person, and say these three words, and then see how they act. Just tell them, paid in full. Come on, if you believe it, put a praise on it. Pain in full. Oh! Everybody bring five people. Five people back on tomorrow night. Bring five people back with you on tomorrow night. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to fill you up and give you an inheritance. Among all them which are sanctified, somebody shall pay it in full. Good night. God bless you. Get home safely. We'll see you back tomorrow night.